All right, welcome grade eight to another video. Uh, welcome as we start off our new unit. Uh, this unit is going to deal a lot more with uh, parallel lines and angles within triangles and within other shapes. Um, so we're gonna be continuing a little bit in some of the geometry that we've been starting um, and understanding more about the angles side of it. So to start off, a little bit of just some recap of things that hopefully you know already. And that is that, uh, let's say we have a straight line and we could have multiple lines that are on here, but this line here is straight. Um, just a little bit of a reminder that uh, if we add up all of these angles, one, two, three, on a straight line, all together, those are going to add up to equal 180 degrees. That's gonna be important to remember that number 180 degrees is gonna be key. Um, also, if we have, let's say we have a point uh, and we have angle here, here, but also here and maybe here, um, going all the way around, in this case, angle one, two, three, four, five, and six, all the way back to where we started, all of those are going to add up to equal 360 degrees. These numbers are going to be important also to understand uh, how best to yeah to solve some of these questions. The other things has to do the other thing has to do with when angles when lines intersect. So let's say I had two lines here and they're intersecting. Um, opposite angles are equal. So in this case, if I had angle one is going to be equal to angle three, whatever that might end up being. Angle two is going to be equal to angle four, whatever that might be, right? We, we can also say certain things like angle two plus angle three is gonna be 180 degrees. Um, we could use anything. We could say angle three plus angle four is also gonna be 180 degrees. We could say that angle one plus angle two plus angle three plus angle four is all gonna be 360 degrees when we add them all together. So we can kind of use that understanding to be able to just recap a little bit more about how angles work. Uh, just another quick reminder about things too, is that sometimes we might have a shape that looks like this, uh, might have a little box in, in the corner. That box we call a right angle and so that's always going to equal 90 degrees or half of a line. It's exactly put in half there. So if I were to have uh, a 90 degree box here, if I were to have an angle and this was 23 degrees and I were to figure out that one, I just have to figure out what's left of the 90 in order to figure out what this missing angle is going to be. So here, if this is 23, 90 minus 23 means that there is 67 degrees left in that angle. So that's a little bit of a recap on angle properties. Now let's take a look at some things with parallel lines. Well, a parallel line uh, or a set of parallel lines are lines that continue in the exact same direction. Uh, and they, are, they always have the exact same distance between them. Um, and so we show that generally by adding little lines here, little arrows, uh, to show that a parallel line, uh, that they, these are indeed parallel. They will never cross each other. That's the important thing to understand. Um, and we use, so let's say this is A, B, this is C, D. We use uh, certain symbols to represent that. So we would say that line segment A, B is parallel to line segment CD. So we kind of put these two slashes there, these two lines, these two parallel lines to represent that these two lines are indeed parallel to one another. Um, so we also have some things that are not parallel. Uh, so for example, if I had this and this line here, we would see that even though they're not crossing yet, eventually very soon they will cross. And so we would say that PQ and line RS are line S, are not parallel to each other. Uh, they will eventually cross, and so those are not parallel lines. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot with parallel lines as we continue to work through this. 
uh, as we continue to work through some of these sections. But for now, let's put our parallel line idea on hold for a quick second as we talk about the other part of this lesson, which is trans transversals. So a transversal is what happens anytime you have, now these are not parallel lines, but anytime you have a line that crosses through two other lines. In this example, you have this line cutting through these and you actually have eight different angles that are formed. Uh, let's just name these angles here. We're gonna name them P, Q, R, and S. And then these ones down here, we'll just name A, B, C, and D. And so we have all of these different angles that are formed, eight in fact, from just one line crossing through these two others. And so uh, we can talk now about some of these different ones, and we can talk about some of these as corresponding angles. So for example, angle P and angle A, we would say correspond together. Angle Q and angle B, they correspond together. Angle R and angle C, they correspond. They both are, uh, fit under there. And angle S and angle D, those are all pairs of corresponding angles in this transversal uh, diagram. Now, on top of having uh, corresponding angles, we also have alternate angles. Alternate angles are kind of like opposite ones. So angle R and angle A are opposite to one another. Angle S and angle B are opposite to one another or alternate angles. Uh, more specifically, these types of alternate angles we call alternate interior angles because they're on the inside of what's going on. We also, so all of these though, all four of these are called interior angles. They're all on the same side of the transversal or simply interior angles, which makes the rest of these exterior angles as well. So in this, if we were to say this is line segment AB and this is CD, these obviously right now are not parallel, but if they were parallel, we get some really interesting properties that come out here. So let's redraw these lines, but again as parallel lines, and let's see how that might affect some of the angles, and let's see if we can come up with some rules with these angles in order to figure out what might match. So again, I have a line going through. Again, I'm gonna label these angles as P, Q, R, and S, and A, B, C and D. Well, if line segment AB is parallel to line segment CD, then there are some interesting things that come up about these uh, angles. We can see angle A is going to equal angle P. So angle A equals angle P. And if you remember from before, we call these corresponding angles. Angle, so corresponding angles are equal. Okay. Now we have more corresponding angles. We talked about A and P are the same, B and Q are the same, C and R are the same, and D and S are the same. So all of those are equal to each other. That's kind of neat. Um, we also can see that angle A and angle R, so our, what we called our alternate angles, are also equal. alternate angles are equal. And then uh, finally, some extra bit of information here that we know is that uh, angle, so from, from before we've already talked about how, for example, angle A equals angle C. That was just in a single line passing through. 
as well as angle B would equal angle D, and so on and so forth up here. So those are already equal. We talked about that before too. Um, and we also talked about the fact that angle A plus um, angle, now you could take any angle here. You could take angle B, but remember B and S are the same. So they say plus angle S is going to equal 180 degrees. All right, angle A and B, A and S, S and P, P and Q, Q and R, B and C, C and D, D and A, those angles added together are going to equal 180 degrees. So this is neat. With parallel lines, we can actually use a lot of the information in order to solve for some of the missing bits of the question. So the converse statements of uh, transversal lines through parallel, parallel lines is that um, when we have two straight lines, A, B, and C, D, that are parallel, that are cut by a transversal, which they're just going to call TS in the lesson, if the corresponding angles are equal, so this we're going the opposite way, we're saying what if we don't know they're parallel? Well, if the corresponding angles are equal, then AB is parallel to CD. And if the alternate angles are equal, then AB is parallel to CD. And if the interior angles on the same side of the transversal, so A and S or R and B, you could use either of those, are supplementary, so supplementary just means they equal 180, then A and B is parallel to C and D. So this is great. So we're going to use this information now to solve for some missing side length or to some missing angles in these particular questions. Um, if you feel like you have a good grasp on this, you can stop this here. If you feel like you'd like to continue and plug away and hear more about some of the examples, then stick around and we're going to step through example one, two, and three as well. Example one. Um, in example one, it says in the figure uh, that we're given, and the figure that we're given is one that we've worked a lot with before, um, where we have parallel lines, we have a transversal running through it. It says um, already that AB is parallel to CD, um, and it says find the measure of certain angles. So they want us to find X, Y, and Z when we know that this angle is 70 degrees. Okay. Nice and easy, there's a couple of things that we can do here as we step through. Um, so first of all, if we know that this is 70, then we know that X also has to be 70, right? We know that those match up. Um, and so X already is 70 degrees, it has to be the same as what's here. We know that the one opposite to X, Y, has to be the same. Uh, and so that's also 70 degrees. Now the last one left is this Z here. And we know that if this is a straight line, then either y and z together or x and z together have to equal, or this is 70 and z, have to equal 180 degrees. So all that z is is 180 degrees minus 70 degrees uh, or 110 degrees for angle z. So that's how we would step through uh, example one. Not too much there. Um, and try it one is going to be very similar. Let's take a look at example two, which steps it up a little bit in terms of what we have to solve. Um, we are given uh, a much more complicated figure. Um, so we are given a line that goes here, a line that kind of comes across. We're given another line that comes down here. And we are told that these lines are in fact parallel to each other. And we're also given another line that comes across here. And we are also told that these lines are parallel to one another. So we have a lot going on here. Um, we're told that this angle is 54 degrees. Uh, we also have another line splitting up here. And that's the X and the Y that we have to solve. Um, or sorry, that's the X and the X that we have to solve. We're told that those are the same angles. And then this down here is the Y angle that we have to solve in degrees. Okay. So there's a couple of things that we can work with here as we go through solving this question. First of all, if this is 54 degrees, this is parallel and this is parallel, then this also has to be 54 degrees. If this is 54 degrees, then this has to be 54 degrees. So we know already the angle Y has to be 
54 degrees. It's x we still have to solve. We know that whatever this is plus this has to equal 180. So, uh, we and we have two of them here. So angle x is going to be 2 times x minus 54 is going to give me 180. That's one way you could think about it. The other way that you can think, if you don't like to think in terms of algebra here, take 180, subtract 54 from that, and you're going to get 126. Um, and then all you have to do, th that means that this is 126 degrees. All you have to do is split that in half. So when we split that in half, we're going to get 63 degrees on either side, which means that my angle X has to be 63 degrees. So that's how you'd step through and solve that particular question as you're working through. Uh, and again, try it too is very similar to that as well. Uh, let's take a look at example three, our final example here, as we go through understanding more about parallel lines and uh, transversals and missing angles, those sorts of things. So this time we're given another shape we're given two parallel lines here, and we're also given a set of lines coming through, and we're asked to figure out this angle here, this missing angle. We know that this is 35 degrees, and we know that this is 30 degrees. So they're at different degrees, which makes things a little bit more challenging as we go through solving this particular question. And uh, with this one here, what I would say is uh, if you're stuck on trying to solve this particular question, uh, break this into break this into different parts or different pieces. Um, and so the way to do that would be think about kind of a, an imaginary parallel line going through the middle here. And if you had an imaginary parallel line, really what you have is you have like an x1 and an x2 right now. Okay, and if you have that imaginary parallel line and you want to continue these transversals continuing in either direction, we know that this angle, if this is 30, then this angle also has to be 30. So kind of our little x2 is 30 degrees. If this is 35, then this little x1 has to be 35. Which means that when we bring those two together to just give us the proper x, that's just 35 degrees plus the 30 degrees to give us 65 degrees total for angle X. And that's the only thing that's missing in solving this particular question for example three. Um, try it three is uh, very similar to that one. And so hopefully you can step through and uh, try to piece together how best to solve that particular question as well.